Hello, this is video number three. If you missed videos one and two, please check them out before you take on this video. However, if you think you don't need to check the other two videos out, then welcome to my world. Because if you love my world, then you'll love me too. Okay, let's get down to some real math uh, uh, explanations. Now, based on my teaching experience, I understand that a lot of students find these two laws very confusing. They confuse this with this, or sometimes they don't even know what it means. I'm here to demystify that mystery. Let's get down to this one. I talked about this in video number two, where I said any number raised to power zero is equal to one. And I explained it, that it's basically you saying that you have one and you want to multiply it by, don't multiply it because there's nothing here that tells you the number of times. So there is no number of time to multiply one. There's no number of times to multiply one. So you just leave the one like that. So multiply, so this means multiply one, not this one, multiply one by x, how many times? Because if you write x, it becomes one time. But if you don't write anything, then it means no time. And that leaves you with one. That's the reasoning behind x being equal, x to the power zero being equal to one. However, if x is zero, that leaves us with a problem. Multiplying x by itself, when x is zero, if you multiply zero by itself, no matter the number of times, your answer will always be zero. However, what if you raise zero to the zeroth power? Let's say you change this to zero. Zero to the zeroth power. It's like saying, multiply one by zero, how many times? Zero times, it means don't multiply, so the answer is one. Is it possible that zero to the power zero is one? Well, some mathematicians say that's the answer. Some mathematicians say it is impossible for zero to anything to, be, to just suddenly become one. So there is this division in the math world. So now this is the agreement or disagreement. Leave it alone. It is undefined. We don't know the answer. We don't agree. There's no way to prove it or to disprove it. So we will never have a situation where zero is raised to power zero. That's the conclusion of all mathematicians. Let's leave it aside. Therefore, the exception to this rule is that x cannot be zero. Okay? This is the exception. Whenever you apply this rule, be careful, make sure your x is not equal to zero because if x is zero and the person on the other side who is about to correct your test does not like the other side's conclusion, they're going to judge you as wrong. Okay? You don't want to be wrong after doing a lot of work. So, do not use zero to the power of zero in any mathematical calculation or expression. Stay with the majority. The majority say it is undefined. We don't know what the answer is. It is a mathematical anomaly. Stay away from it. So x cannot be zero for this law. However, if the number is not x, any number you use will always give you one if you raise it to zero. So I'm going to take a number and use it across these examples. Okay? I like the number eight. So, I like 8 because 8 looks good. Okay, so 8 to the 0th power will be equal to 1. If I change the 8 to 17, 1.5, 3.2, 1 1.8, 8.75, whatever it is, as long as I raise it to power 0, my answer will always be 1. So in this situation, there's only one answer, only one answer. It will always be 1. So let's say I change this to 2x minus 8, and then I raise everything to power 0. It is not my business what x is or what the answer to this, or when you simplify or substitute, I don't care. All I know is whatever this is, if I raise it to power 0, my answer is going to be 1. 
So that's basically that. Sometimes you will need this to save you from a situation when the exponent is zero and you have a very complicated thing to solve and you just go, wait, I don't have to solve it because when I raise it to power zero, my answer is going to be one. Let's move on to the next one. Now, this is very, 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 very easy to understand. When you find a negative exponent like this, let me use an example. You have x raised to power 2, negative. If you have a negative exponent, it means you are dividing, you are not multiplying. Okay? It means you are dividing, you are not multiplying. That's the meaning of a negative exponent. And what are you dividing by? X. That's the only thing. How many times are you dividing? Two times. Negative means dividing, and you're dividing two times. What are you dividing? Well, if there's nothing to divide, I told you, adopt the number one. The number one doesn't change anything when you multiply. Okay? And if you divide something by one, it doesn't change anything. So what you're saying is that I am dividing one by x. How many times? Two times. So you can rewrite this as x. That's the same thing as dividing x by x two times. Or you can split it into two and say it is 1 over x times x. That's the meaning of this law. So c could be any number. c could be any number. C could be any number. Remember that. So I'm going to adopt 3. Let me assume that this number is 3. So 3 to the power of negative 2 will be 1 over 3 to the second power. So the only thing that has changed is that the negative sign shows me I am dividing. Just put 1 on top of it. Okay? 1 on top of it, divide by 3 to the second power. You're doing it twice. And you can break this down into 1 over 3 times 3, or you just write the answer straight. It will be 1 over 9. So basically, that's the meaning of this law. You can see you retain x to the power of c, and this means it is dividing something. It is under the bar, okay? It is under the bar. Someone said that you could actually look at it this way, that it is x to the power of c negative Instead of this negative being here, it's just a long bar here, and then it becomes longer, like that. You see that? That's what x to the power of negative c is. Just this negative becomes a longer line, and the c just comes down. Okay? If you remember that, you will not be confused. That's the second law, okay? That's, um, that's what I will call the fourth one. It doesn't matter what you call it, okay? Um, it's just the negative exponent law which means if you have a negative exponent, you are actually supposed to divide by whatever the base is, the number of times of the exponent, okay? See, see, I, see I, an ant is there trying to learn some math, okay? Take a break, thank you. Now, let's go to the next one. Please do not confuse this with this. The exponent is what matters. In this case, the exponent is zero, in this case, the exponent is negative. In this case, the exponent is a fraction. Okay? When you have a fraction as an exponent, you are not multiplying. You are looking for the root. Okay? You're looking for the root. It simply means that, let me just use an example straight away. If you have 9 raised to the power of one half. It simply means you're looking for a number that you will multiply by itself two times. That's the meaning of this two here. You're looking for another number that you would multiply by itself twice and it will give you nine. So what you're actually saying is you're trying to take the square root of 9. 
And the only number you'll multiply by itself to get 9 is 3, because 3 times 3 is... So that's it. Now, if you choose to use another number, 8, let's say we take 8, and we say 8 to the power of, let's take one third. Well, I chose one third because I know what the answer will be. Okay, so if we choose one third, we're going to have what number is that that would multiply itself three times and the answer will be eight. That's the meaning. That number is two. So you're taking the cube root, okay? You're taking the cube root. You write it this way. The cube root of eight is going to be two, okay? Now, there are other ways to solve this, but because this is the law we're learning, I'm just going to stick to this, okay? So, that's what it means. You just think of the number you multiply by itself, the number of times shown in the denominator of the fraction, and that's how you do it. For example, 81 to 1 over 4, you could do 81 raised to the power 1 over 4, 1 over 4. If you do 81 raised to 1 over 4, you're going to get the fourth root. That's how you say it. The fourth root of 81, which is the number you will multiply by itself four times, and your answer will eventually be 81. That number is 3, okay? Because 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 again is 81. So that's your answer. So, basically, you have... These are the most important things to know. Other things, you just need to know, oh, when you see this, this is what you do. When you see this, this is what you do. That's how this works. I hope you learned something. Thank you for liking and sharing this video. I just want you to know, want you to know also that I have an Instagram uh, page where I post the questions that I would like to solve first and then I make people just decide if they want me to solve the problem and then I could make a YouTube video over it. I find questions from every corner and I post it on my Instagram. It's the same um, handle, it's Prime Newtons on Instagram. Just search it and please follow, check out the questions that I will post and tell me if you want me to post it. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notifications button too so you know when I post a new video. Um, I thank you for watching this video. Once again, my name is Newton Okewa, and it's good to have you around. Have a wonderful day and God bless you. Bye-bye.